Hey shooters, just wanted to give you a quick idea about what horizontal dwell time is, or dwell time is in the lockup of a tilting barrel designed pistol. It doesn't make a difference what manufacturer, they all have a very similar principle in that the barrel and slide move together as one piece in rearward motion for a certain period of time, certain travel distance, before the barrel cams out of the locking recesses. Whether it's a single lug or multiple lug barrel doesn't make any difference. Uh, so I've got a Llama, $500 Llama 1911 sitting here. It's not important which gun it is, uh, but I just want to show you kind of how it looks. Now I've got a one uh, indicator uh, mentoring travel, rearward travel to slide, another indicator on the barrel hood. Now, it's not going to be an exact science because I would actually have to tram the barrel in to make sure the barrel is, hasn't been polished at an angle. So there's going to be a little bit of movement here. But I'll, I'll repeat this a couple times, and I think if you watch the video, you'll recognize that there is, in fact, about 60 to 65 thousandths travel, a rear wood slide travel, before the barrel actually makes any appreciable difference in, in lowering. And it really doesn't unlock for about... 60 to 65 thousandths of rearward travel. Now you'll see, as I just like touch it, you'll, I can get this, this to move a little bit, this uh, dial indicator just to move a little bit just by touching it. But I've got it locked in here pretty well, and I'm both at zero, so I'm going to move it out. I'm starting to drop off at zero just a little bit, because again, as I move it, that, that, that barrel is not perfectly perpendicular to the indicator. So as I even if I just move the barrel, whole gun back, if I could, that indicator would change, would shift a little bit. But I'll show you there's a little dwell in there. Here, here we go. As we move backwards, it's come down about 3,000. I've moved about 2,000 out of battery or rearward travel. And I continue to move back. I'm down about 3,000, but I'm at 10,000 here. It's still stuck at 3,000 barrel drop, but I'm up to almost 18,000. I'm at 32,000 rearward travel, and I'm still at 3,000 barrel drop. I continue to move back. Come on, fingers, push on it. 50,000, still at 3,000 barrel drop. 60 thou, about three and a half thou barrel drop, and watch, it's going to drop off precipitously. I'm at 62, and I'm going to try and eat back as slow as I can. I still got an 18 pound spring in this gun. Come on, there it goes. It's down to four at 70 thou, and there's at five at 80 thou, and it's dropping all the way off. There it goes. So as I go forward, I try to go forward as slow as I can. We're at about uh, eight thou and 90 thou out of battery. I'm trying to push it forward with my hand. There's 5,000. Watch this. This thing's going to level out. And this is the barrel drop. It's going to stop moving up. And it does right about there. And we're at 55,000 out. And it's not moving. It's just moving very ever so sadly. It's got a big long dwell there at 20,000. And it's closed up again. So again, what's happening here is that the barrel and slide are locked up in mortal combat. They are not going to move in relationship to each other until the link on this particular gun or a kidney loop or a locking cam pulls the barrel out of battery, and that doesn't happen in just about any uh, semi-auto pistol until the slide and barrel move back 50, 60, 70 thousandths uh, together. And the more that these stay in exact relationship to each other, in other words, the barrel does not drop at all until the absolute last instant it can unlock, the more inherent accuracy you're going to get out of the gun. The more the barrel can do what the barrel was designed to do, is release bullets uh, as straight out the barrel as it can, or the barrel's not trying to move down as the barrel's trying to, the bull's trying to leave the barrel. That's uh, dwell time as quick, quickly as I can explain it.